Hey, everybody. It is the first Sunday in November. It is Sunday, November 7th. And this is my favorite month of the year. And I'm so excited to start winter with you because winter is awesome. Even if you have seasonal affective disorder like me, even if you love sunshine, winter is still awesome. And Yoni is going to tell us why tonight. Yoni is going to light up winter. It is Rosh Chodesh Kislev. It is the month of light. And we are going to sprinkle some light. I'm in a silly mood tonight. Go with it. Uh, all over, all over here and all over everything. And, um, and it's it Lily's birthday month. Yeah, that too. I'm going to be in a good mood all month. Anyway, um, I'm really excited to have Yoni lead uh, tonight's call. And as you guys know, Yoni is, is a great coach. But one of the things that she's best at is marrying the mindset to the practical. So tonight, it's really important that you take notes. It's really important that you listen and open your heart to what she has to say. Now, one of the best ways to do that is to move our body. So you can stand up for a second, sit back down, stretch. Like we said, we're all feeling a little bit tired. Stretch, open your mind, open your heart, give a little shimmy, jump in place. I'm not showered yet today. Um, but really you only will ever get out of this call, these calls, what you put in. And if you come in with a tired attitude, then you're going to leave not fully embracing what you could have. So don't let this be a missed opportunity. I'm going to turn the floor over to Yoni and I'm really excited for some of that magical dust to come and give us a winter wonderland. Okay. Hi guys. Um, one of the things I want to start out with is, and we always have a coach call right before we, we get on with everybody um, to give ourselves a bit of perspective. Also for me, I was actually down for the last week. Um, since starting to be, I am, I was someone who was sick all the time and I'm rarely sick, which is thank God. Um, but this was one of those where I abused my body. I did not give myself enough of anything and I was down for the count. During the last week, it was actually my to be anniversary. Um, two years ago, on November third, I called Lily crying um, that I needed to do something, and it was interesting because this call being about a, a November, making it a November to remember, as well as things that we should remember in November. Um, I will always have this month be pivotal for myself. Um, most of the things of, of comments that I got over the course of the last day or so of people just sending me little things they would like discussed either tonight on the call or over the course of the week during the posts um, were different things that I had experienced at different st stages of my journey. The interesting part was for me that I started just as the colder months were starting, which in Israel is a bit of a joke this week because it's so hot and I'm wondering when the cold is going to show up. In any case, one of the biggest things that um, I remember differently from my very first winter to my second winter where we were all in lockdown <laughs> to now approaching and going into this third winter is, is how each of us at a different stage um, will find different you know, struggles. It doesn't mean, and we said this a hundred times, that we as coaches don't struggle with things we do all the time um, differently than we did probably earlier along our, our, our path. But a lot of things that I heard right at the beginning, um, right now from people was about, first of all, the time change. So, okay, I'm gonna throw a little bit of science at you. And then I wanna kind of open the floor and I wanna hear a lot about what you guys are struggling with or things that you'd like information on. Um, but to begin with, and I think everybody has, has had the experience of knowing, like, let's face it, it's harder, uh, weight loss is harder statistically, and that's a, scientifically with a lot of the, the research I actually was reading this, this past week, it is statistically harder to lose weight during the winter. So those who have a harder time, you're not making it up. But as I wrote in the post today, is that an excuse? Good try, no. It just means you need to know what things you need to do to try to balance where those difficulties could be. So in the winter, we're getting colder, we're drinking a lot less, drinking a lot less, Often you're gonna feel dehydrated, dehydrated, you're tired. And the one thing that happens in your body when you are tired is you actually have hormones that will make you hungrier. One of the different types of eating, or excuse me, one of the different types of hunger that we actually have is um, a tired hungry. You know, people have had a, an angry hungry, people have had a, I'm cold and I'm hungry. 
Very often when we're actually thirsty, we define it as hungry. So we'll add to that whole list of when we feel hungry is when we're tired. So in the winter, because of course it's getting uh, darker a lot earlier. So as anyone who's ever had trouble sleeping knows you need to kind of have melatonin to help you get to sleep sometimes. We have a circadian rhythm. We have a certain thing in our body that helps um, us know the ebb and flow of the day. You need sleep, you have certain hormones, you have cell processes that go on in your body um, and it has to do with the exposure to light. So as it gets dark much, much earlier, it doesn't give you an excuse to you know, suddenly be grandma Annie and 90 years old and suddenly have dinner at 4.30. We are not the old age home. We don't suddenly eat because it's dark outside. What we do need to do is maybe tell our bodies certain things like, hey, I see that it's getting darker closer to four. Maybe that's a great time to make a set small snack time so that I know I will be still hungry when I get to dinner time but I'm not gonna be full. I'm not gonna be thinking that this is the, the dinner and that's, that's not my dinner and done just because it's dark outside. Um, there are different biological factors that actually are, are making you feel hungry at times where you shouldn't necessarily be having a full-fledged meal. Vitamin D we get from the sun. Anybody who knows anything about vitamin D, so it's actual exposure to the sun. Now there are foods, you can help yourself. There are foods that actually have, are higher in vitamin D. Salmon is higher in vitamin D, mushrooms, liver, I remember what the other one was. Oh, egg yolks are actually higher in vitamin D. There are ways that you can actually supplement what you're eating, um, supplement your vitamin D just because you're not actually having that exposure to vitamin D. And there actually is a correlation in obesity and an actual low level of vitamin D in the body. So there is a connection between not getting enough of that actual good light so that our bodies have the, the natural melatonin when we need it, the vitamin D when it's supposed to do what it does for our body. But when we get to late at night, if anyone has ever seen any of these ads that pop up about blue light at night, you need these glasses when you're on the computer at, light, at night. Blue light, the kind of light that's kind of as the sun starts coming up in the morning, actually lets our body know it's time to wake up. So the reason that many people have trouble falling asleep at night is because your phone, your iPad, your computer all create that same type of light and your body doesn't actually know what time it is. So it's, it's thinking it's daytime. Um, the kind of light that's nighttime, which is called the red light is actually ones that can trigger the towards darkness, towards sleep. If your body isn't working with the light, enough, you will feel hungry throughout that evening. So what are things that we can do? First of all, let's go very easy. Plan your day in smaller meals. Sometimes having smaller meals, meaning you have a breakfast, you have a lunch, you have a dinner, same plate that we've all learned. It doesn't mean your plate has to be the same size. So if you're having a snack in between your lunch and dinner, you still are having dinner at the same time you've always had it. And you won't get to that point of thinking all of a sudden, because you're having these outside triggers tell you that you're hungry, you'll, have, you'll be satisfied at a different, uh, at, at the right times. Um, big, 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 big tip for winter. And I, I, when I say talk the talk, walk the walk, I literally have soup that is ready always. This is the time of year clear out whatever you don't need, throw out whatever you need, give away whatever you need that is in your freezer, fill your freezer with different soups. I know somebody recently just told me they don't do soup. I don't understand that, but for you, I, we will find something else. But soup is a great way to A, just like we know if we have our 16 ounces of water before a meal, we're, we're filling our body with something that we won't kind of eat with our eyes. Instead, we'll actually eat with our body and knowing when we feel full. So later in this week, I'm actually gonna be sharing a PDF with all of you. There's about seven or eight non-FFC soups for all of you guys to try throughout the winter, just to kind of have in your back pocket, have in your fridge, have in your freezer. But one of the tips that I actually spoke with the challenger today was have soup at the beginning of every meal if you can. I don't mean throughout the day, but have a, have a small bowl of soup before lunch, have a small soup before dinner. You will see that you're feeling really satiated so that when you get to mealtime, you're not overindulging. 
And this is the time of year where all of those kind of soups to play around with what works for you. Some of the, here, Jen's soup went viral last year. Jen made a, a broccoli soup that literally went viral. Why? Because everyone this time of year kind of depends on orange soup, whatever that is called, orange soup, which if we're not having FFCs at night can be problematic. Now, yes, one of the ones I will be sharing this week is a spaghetti squash soup. So I'm really happy to be able to share an orange soup that does work, but it has that thick feel. Find comfort foods. You know, everyone says I have, a tr I have trouble, I have difficulty during the winter because I go to all the comfort foods. Find foods that mimic that same feeling. Sometimes it's a mouth feeling, sometimes it's a texture, whatever it might be finding those specific types of food that will help you. One of the things, I'll give you an example that, that I yell at said recently, for those people who do happen to drink protein shakes at night, have your protein be a hot mug cake. And- I do that, you know, if anybody wants, we can discuss that at a different time. But in the summer, I like making my, like I have my Shakeology as an ice cream. And in the winter, very often I make it a hot mug cake. Again, these are one of the things you have to get to know yourself because it definitely seems sweeter. And if it then feels more cakey to you, which will then make you crave more, yada, 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 all those things. This is constantly a know yourself, don't test yourself kind of situation. So to answer Pesha, by the way, and yes, sometimes it means you, you spend a few pennies, I'll go wrote more. There are plenty of, if you want to supplement your soup with a, one of these mixes or powders, there are non-MSG low sodium versions and they taste fine. There's like, yes, I can tell you 12 different ways to make the base of your own soup without using any of those. And some of these will have that, but there are soup powders in Israel, in America. So I think everybody is covered by me saying that on this call, there are ways to do it. So if you're someone who does wanna add one of those powders to a soup, yes, you're not playing around with the sodium. You can get it at any of the health, Nitsada Dub Divan in, in, in Israel, any of those health food stores, they have the same looking package. It's just non-sodium glutamate, non-monosodium glutamate and low sodium. So you will still have flavorful soups, but you can also play around. Uh, giving an example of just a soup that, that we were talking about today is that zucchini, as it is, doesn't have a lot of flavor. But what you do with it can be interesting. If you're someone who wants to keep it parab, I will give you an example of making that soup. If you're someone who's willing to be, you know, a little more daring, I'll call it, there was putting in your oven baked turkey bacon that gets all crispy and you crumble it into your soup and it gives it a smoky feeling. So it's a little meat way of, of spicing up a soup, but it's, it works with dinner. And one of the difficulties I think a lot of people have um, dinner time is they keep making They'll throw beans in, they'll throw, save those for lunchtime. You don't have to have, bread doesn't have to be your FFC through the winter. You can find other really hearty ways. Um, and that was one of the next things I want to talk about. There are so many um, FFCs on that list that we all have gotten from Alana. Use the winter time to explore them because things like lentils, making a dal um, out of lentils or all these different bean type options are more of that hearty type foods that people are looking for that are that comfort kind of food, that that would be a great lunch throughout the winter rather than just kind of going to bread, 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 or right. anything like that. Um, so first of all, I just, I kind of want to open it up and I know the chat people are writing, but I kind of want to hear from people and we're all human. So I'm, I'd love to like hear Amazing, from I was just priming everybody. So um, Yoni, Guys, I want to just quickly, you know, maybe you want to show them on, on your screen, there's this thing called reactions. If you click on reactions, there's a little tab there that says raise hand. See, I just raised my hand. So um, amazing. Two participants raised hands. People, you're getting it. Amazing. Reactions, raise hand. Yes. Now, Yoni, you should be able to call on whoever you want. Alana? Alana, did you want to share something? Alana Singer? No. Or were you, or were you just raising your hand to raise your hand? I'm just raising my hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. A plus student. <laughs> okay. Would anybody else like to share? I want to kind of hear from you guys or where, where your struggle is during the winter. I Meaning different people have different, I guess, difficulties. 
And I'd love to hear like what specific things. Becky, go ahead. Okay, well, this is just on the soup topic. I put it in the chat, but um, I love the idea of having soup all the time. And I've definitely been doing that a lot recently, but when I have soup, I really want a crunch in it. So a lot of times I just put in like a small portion controlled amount of croutons, but it would also be nice to have other more um, like veggie friendly ideas. I saw Lily's idea about air fried tofu, but I'd love some other ideas. I'll give you a little hack. I mean, you can do that in the oven too, not just in the air fryer. I'll give you a little hack. If it's a soup that can go dairy, meaning it could be a power soup, but if you're not having meat, there are low fat cheeses that if you put it on a baking paper in your oven and you let that turn into crisp and you crumble that into the top of your soup as your um, accessory, that's the crunch you're looking for. I, my kids figured that one out. So I can't even take credit. They, they literally made their own like Cheez-Its just out of cheese. The 9% cheese actually yeah. gets crunchy so fast, they, much more than the fatty cheese. That's brilliant. That is. They, and they crunch oh, that brilliant. into their cheeses instead of into their soup, instead of using crackers during for a night meal. I would say also some non-dairy options would be, um, I always keep my fridge, like I chose sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds. And then sprinkle those in instead of croutons. That's an easy one. You can just post those in your oven with some olive oil spray and a sprinkle of Himalayan salt. It gives a nice salty, crunchy flavor, like, you know, like croutons. That works. I know I have some challenges that have taken the frozen mini cauliflower. You know, you can get the Sun for us mini the mini cauliflower yeah. and roast that. It doesn't end up being as hard and crunchy, but it gets a little crispy. It gives you something to chew on. Um, in addition to the, you know, blended soup. Also, if, as opposed to crunch, you know how sometimes you like noodles in a chicken soup or things like that, use the skinny pasta. Skinny pasta. I, I mm -hmm. did that last winter with Jen's broccoli soup. Skinny like, pasta. I put in like an entire pack of skinny pasta. In a I'll, go, I'll go one further. There are lots of things that people make during the winter, a bol meat bolognese or all these different things that you put over rice. Skinny pasta makes a petite team version so it has the skinny pasta version and it's that you're creating that mouth feeling that's familiar i put that into soup but it creates that when i want to put meatballs what i've made for my family and they'll have it maybe with white rice or they'll have it with holy pasta i'll have it on top of that petite team one so it has that same texture that i was looking for with rice or of course and cauliflower that's, broccoli rice that's cauliflower another broccoli. that's another yeah. version as well um pesha go for it Oh, am I, am I unmuted? Oh, no, I was actually, I was talking to Sorrel tonight also. We were both saying, we were texting each other at like 6.40, like I already ate dinner. So did I, we're like at me too. Like all of a sudden we're eating so much earlier. And if you don't go to bed at a reasonable time, I've got hours to, to, to deal with where I'm, you know, dinner and done. So I think that's like where I'm, Okay. Is it reasonable for you to have something at four o'clock that would be a little more dense, like something that would sit in your stomach a little heavier and keep you satisfied till that later time you normally ate? And I'll give the example that a lot of people have been coming back that are saying it's worth whether you have a protein shake or people actually just take a yogurt, they'll throw a little, and literally I'm saying this, they'll throw a little bit of like whatever works for them in it. At four o'clock, it sits heavier than certain other things. Have some vegetables as well, but somehow it's it's sitting there not as a full portion of anything, but it's not a light food that you ate it and it's gone. It kind of just be by texture alone. Of you know, anyone who eats Greek yogurt knows it sits heavier, so it kind of will satiate that I need to eat something, but you're not having a whole meal till whatever time you personally eat. I also can't eat early and I feel like I look outside and I'm, I'm you know, Sadie in the, in the old age home who wants to eat by 4.15. So I also think the flip on that, Yoni, Tesha, like you were saying, um, Alana has said something about this. She very often, she always eats dinner early. Her kids are little, so they're eating dinner, but she very much also sometimes what she would do is then again, like Yoni said at that 4, 4.30, start with a lot of the vegetables. So you can even have some soup then, you know, and then go on to dinner. What I would like to propose also just a, just, just a thought, if your circadian clock, because of the hours and the light 
has already just naturally changed to you having dinner earlier, it's also possible that your body is shutting down earlier and your metabolism has not been working as quickly afterwards. So also be open to the fact that you may not get as hungry afterwards as in your head you might be saying to yourself, I still have hours because your body is reacting differently. And also maybe you will be able to start shifting. If you started having dinner earlier, maybe the work that you're doing or whatever else you need to be doing will be happening earlier. And maybe you'll start going to bed a drop earlier than usual. Again, be in tune to not just one aspect of what the time change has done for you, but that it actually might start affecting many other areas of your body. Right. I don't know Kesha, if you're someone who works till late. I was someone who just, and there was no excuse. I was up to, I slept nothing. I was up till late. My whole entire rhythm has, is completely different. I'm up at, I'm walking at 5 a.m. I was never a morning person, meaning I started changing things through my day. I can't, I mean, I joke around that I'm now an old lady because like if I'm up at 1 a.m., it's, it's insane. And, and I, I can't even like move the next day. But you can move that actual clock, like internal clock by changing certain things and you can do it seasonally. It is possible to do that. Um, if I'm one, up at 11, it's crazy. So one thing I will tell you, and lady. I don't normally do this, but Danit, I'm gonna call you out because she does it and it's fantastic. When she gets home, she does school pickup, it's around that four o'clock range. She literally will grab an entire bag of whatever frozen veggies, throw it in a pan, chuck it in her oven. And that is what she is like noshing on till it's dinner time. So first of all, there is something, if somebody was talking about before about needing a little bit of that crispy something, try different vegetables. If you are someone who has never had Brussels sprouts, get everything but the bagel sp spice, throw it in a pan, throw it all over. It's something you can do. Alana had another one that was a, she calls it like the movie night broccoli. Broccoli. I made fun of it until, until my kids were eating broccoli trays through a movie and they're kids. They're not me like trying to convince myself that this is what I want to eat. No, they were good. So that's what I'm saying that this is where it's the time like to really go into those different recipes and try them out. We will be sharing the ones that we can with you, you know, throughout the week also. Um, but I want to hear ones from you guys, share them with your coaches. I always say like, be wary, don't post it onto the, the, the list. So let us review it first, just because I want to make sure that it fits and your coaches can make sure it fits with to be. But if you have things that you think can fit and everyone can benefit, like that would be the greatest way to share with the group. And just check with your, with your coach if it's a to be friendly recipe and we can put them together. Somebody in our, in, in of my challengers this week asked that, we make a, a spreadsheet of tried and true to be recipes. Like if you've already tried certain recipes, thumbs up, thumbs down, and that people can actually give feedback on recipes they've made. There were there, you know, certain things, obviously, you know, taste varies, but some people have made the, I'm just giving one example, the morning brownie something and really did not like it. And other people may have loved it. Becky likes it. Pardon? She said Becky likes it. Also, oh. or if you've tried a to be recipe and you tweaked it just by one or two aspects, sometimes that's just all it needs. And what's the change that, you know, what's the change that you made? Okay. So I'm going to come back and then I'm going to ask you guys a bit more. There's another thing that I want to talk about is people's emotions change with the seasons and many people are affected by it. Um, going back to your why why you signed up for 2B, why you decided it was the time to make a change, this is the time of year. Because a lot of people wear, and this, you know, this is a natural thing to look at. It's muggy and gross and, and raining and dark. It affects you. And I don't want you and, or any of us to go to that emotional place of, I'm, you know, I'm pampering myself with food and I'm kind of forgetting why I'm here. Go back to your original why. Go back to your original, if you, you know, have your original tracker and you wrote those really, those first goals. And I'm not talking about the number, but there's that space below that many of us filled out of, what are my long-term goals? I wanna have a better relationship with food. I wanna know what it is to walk away from a table and there might be food still on my plate. Wait, I wanna know what it is. One second. I don't know if you guys all caught that. But if you are somebody that prints the tracker and never got it or only prints the actual tracker page and you don't know that initial page that Yoni is talking about, about putting in your goals, 
go look it up. That's one of your homework assignments. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm gonna post it. And, and <laughs> one of the things that I, I do suggest when I meet with people is that we all have, there's the page that you get where you, you make a commitment. It's a contract with yourself that I'm, I'm committing to myself wholeheartedly with to be. But we all, just like Alana suggested that at every month, you actually should go back and check your measurements. That's great, that's a practical thing. Gut check yourself every month. So we just started November again, we're one weekend. Now, gut check yourself. Am I doing all those things that I told myself I was gonna be all in so that I couldn't be my best healthiest self or as it's getting a little tougher because of the darkness, because of this change, because of the cold, are those original ideals slipping away or am I staying with my why? When we get to December one, do the same thing. Every time that we start a new month, whether you track on your phone, whether you track in a book, but I will tell you, and now Sorel could tell you also that it's so worth tracking. <laughs> Re-gut checking yourself makes you recommit. It's not just about where that number is in regard to the number before, but where are your emotions? When I start a new month, a new tracker, I know what my weight was from a month ago. And I also write at the beginning of the month what I'm feeling. Not what I'm feeling about today, but what am I feeling about my journey? And there's something to refreshing that no different than we sometimes will refresh the page to kind of see where we are to say all right you know what i have not been digging in the way i should be and now it's time to really dig in again and i love what you just said yoni about digging in like it's not about we get comfortable you lose 5 10 15 pounds and you're not in as much pain as you were and we're not here to like rub your wounds raw and make you feel pain but you are responsible to remind yourself about the difference between where you are today and where you really wish you were. Because as we make progress on the journey, we're farther from that place that, that was so painful that it made us take action. And we don't always have to dig into some deep well of pain. When you find your why, it's about why where I am might be fine but there's so much that I could have that's right there if I just am willing to get out of that comfort zone and grab it. And I think just what Yoni was saying is so much deeper than, than we have to like pause and like create space for, for what she just said. Sorrel, I wanna, you were, had your hand up for a while. Thanks. So I wanna um, kind of relate to what Ayelet was saying in that um, in the four months I've been doing three, for the most part, my meals are very filling and I don't find myself wanting to snack. But on the occasion that I have snacked and I've asked Ayala about this, about whether I should eat dinner afterwards if I'm not hungry. So she'll say, no, like if you're not hungry, don't eat. And that was always like really good advice because I just really didn't need to eat. So now I do find the pattern of the darkness. It's hard for me to say winter because it's not cold, but like the darkness is definitely like making me eat want to eat earlier and today for example so I ate um, a meal with protein but I felt like at five o'clock just trust yourself that it will be enough to get you through but the question is and I'm going this is a point if I'm eating like just vegetables or just soup and then I'm completely full and I haven't had my protein so then I make my and then I'm full so I make myself have the protein later Okay, so I'm definitely going to differ from some of the coaches on this one. There is an aspect to listen to your body. I am a don't skip a meal person. So I will plate something. I agree. I, I, I will agree plate that. something and I will say, then make that plate smaller so that you are having the elements you're supposed to have at that meal. But at five o'clock, like at the old five time. Five is still if, you're be dinner, if you're going to be dinner and done at five o'clock, then make it a dessert plate. If you're going to be done. What I was going, one of the other things that I'll write about this week is dessert also- Dessert plate as in size. Right, meaning the size of your plate should either be a dinner plate, salad plate. If it's not gonna be big and you're gonna be satisfied, so have a small dessert plate, and but keep your ratios the way they should be for that meal. And I guess then it's track and see, because if I'm truly 
not hungry afterwards with that smaller plate with all the elements that I need at 5 p.m., great. But if I am, then I'll know for the next day to have vegetables or to have soup by my side and then go to the protein later, right? But I, I wouldn't wait till you're, I would also prep extra veggies for later on a night that you're right. gonna try and eat less because you think that's all you need always have backup food in the fridge so that like you're not then oh I guess it didn't work I'll wait for it tomorrow <laughs> well, dinner and, but dinner and done like I'm wired like I I feel like dinner and done but just like you can pre-game your dinner you can also post-game your dinner right like you can divide up your breakfast very often I have my my FFC an hour and a half after I eat breakfast because protein really gets me full and I but I need enough protein to stay full long enough if I only eat if I eat that balanced meal all at breakfast, I won't get enough protein to actually keep me full. So I have my protein and then I have my carb a little bit later. So at dinner, you can always have extra veggies an hour and a half later. If also, you choose, also choose a dense protein, right? especially in winter. If you're having, they're, they're, you know, they're different. all of you had different proteins. A denser protein, especially someone who's eating earlier and isn't sure if they're going to feel later, have a denser protein that will keep you satisfied longer. Just define what dense is for them because yeah, all of the that, proteins that yeah, you put dense. on the list, the vitamin D list, are all perfect examples of denser protein. So why don't you like repeat those for well, I was gonna say, so denser proteins, things like salmon, eggs are not actually, I mean, you're not gonna sit there and eat egg yolks. Um, but when people are having um, tuna salad, if you're having- um, you know, sushi where there's smaller pieces and you're kind of, it's, it's a hard thing to judge or you're having uh, minced meat kind of, you're not judging what it is rather than a piece of chicken, a thing of salmon, things that, um, and this quantifiable. is quantifiable. Meatballs. To, right, quantifiable, but also a yogurt at night is not, I don't think it's going to keep you satisfied. That being said, Everybody again with the winter. Try, I track, and see. Before I was vegan, an egg white, like um, egg white pizza with veggies on the side keeps me kept no, me but that's, full. That's not, it wasn't, it's not the egg that was keeping you full. That's a meal. Well, that's what I'm trying to say is the, the, the protein itself, make sure it's something that's going to sit satisfied. Mom, I wasn't ignoring you, but your hand is still up. So before we lose time. Yes. Yo, hold you're on, you're still, you're still muted. You're still muted. You do what I do. Gotta wait till that. Can someone unmute her? I did, I did. I did. You have, you have ignored me before, so it's okay. But the point was, over on this side of the world, it's cold already. Um, and as a teacher who takes a bag of vegetables and all those kind of things, and I take all of that to school with me for every break I have. But when I get in the house, I want to eat the countertops. I'm starving. I used to You're make hungry. a thick, I had the, I had the Shakeology, but it's cold. So now Yoni knows I'm a soup crazy person. I take my soups and I do them in the smaller container, take one out to frost in the morning and I come in and I've been doing that broccoli soup or the other cauliflower soup. And at least I'm having a warm something. And if you don't zhuzhur it too much, it's pretty crunch. You know, it's full. It's it's just one of those soup things that's helped me because it's four in the afternoon. Right. But if I was going to say, and I'll give you what I, I yell at tip and I will share it in the group. People who normally have, you have Shakeology in the afternoon. There's right. a way to put it in a mug to have it as a, as a warm mug. And, and yes, as a warm muffin. When you heat up Shakeology, it does kill some of the superfood aspects. So let me make something clear. Shakeology is not only about the protein. The beauty of Shakeology is, yes, a lot of the, the, the nutrition and superfoods in it. But at the end of the day, it also has 16 grams of protein. So when I sometimes do want that, I have that. And then, oh, no, what happened to the superfoods? Yes, in that mug there were. And the, the superfoods specifically that you lose are the um, pre and probiotics. So, um, okay, like you don't eat a yogurt. Okay, we have less than a minute. The other thing, and then we, were gonna, we are going to talk about this throughout the week, is other ways that you can be supplementing your drinks. I'm going to talk quickly because it's going to get cut off. So, thank you for having me on the call. And, but I will tell you that go through different teas that work. 
Try Lily's Hot Cocoa. There are many different ways to supplement your liters of water that you should be getting, but this is definitely the time here. Don't get lax on that. Weight loss will be affected directly by the amount of water you stop drinking, along with obviously your good nutrition. But as we know, water first. So the first thing I will say to all of you is go buy different flavored teas, find out which ones you like, make them a liter at a time, and ask us any other questions you have in the group this week.